A big thank you to Jazz Corneal and also Brian, who let me know that Dalabora, which I believe is her, yeah, she doesn't currently have a job in our town. So that's the first thing we want to rectify today. You can see her right here. And uh, her skills are in the hunting area, and also she's not bad at production. I think that we're going to get her into the hunting, because in this hunting lodge right here, we do have a vacancy. Uh, so it kind of makes sense as what her skills are. So let's put her in there, Dalabora, there we go. Uh, and also then we'll get some more food out of the actual hunting lodge. Uh, talking of which, while we're here, let's have a look. So now we've got two people doing this. This is like what we're looking at getting each day. Uh, and 10 meat per day is pretty good. And then a couple of the other bits here. So not too bad. And at least now, there we go, she's going to go off to work. So thank you guys for that. Uh, now also over here somewhere, uh, must be over this way actually, we've got a bucket of soured milk, which we're going to be able to use pretty soon. What I'm going to do for now is put it into the food storage area. So let's go and do that. Uh, oh, there's, uh, okay, this soured milk right here. Let's actually take the soured milk and the milk then, and we can do stuff with that. If you put normal milk into here, it will turn into soured milk. So I believe what's happened there is that my worker has actually built the goats and that's how we've ended up with that in there. And then it has soured. I think it sours each uh, season change. Now, I also had uh, really useful comments from Terracon Consulting and Obsidian Oak. So if we go into management right here, if we go to animals and then down to like the goats, for example, we have this readiness, right? And you see only the female goat has readiness percentage, which is currently 91. That's because that's how ready she is to be milked. So when that hits 100, we can milk her. And that's where I was going wrong in the previous episode. Similarly, if we look at the sheep, you see, they both have a readiness percentage because this is to do with the readiness of them being sheared. So as you can see, we're closing in on 100 for all of them. What I'll do is I'll progress like one day and then we'll check back in on that or something. And I'll let you guys know how that goes. But that's why I was going wrong with the goats and sheep. And now we know what to do with that. Now, what I could do uh, over here is, uh, let's see, I want to free up this, please. Um, come on, where's the thing? There we go. So free that up. Now, in other, we are now able to make quark, as you can see. So we're going to buy that for 100. And uh, we make that with one bucket of soured milk. So let's do that real quick. And then we can make up some cheese. And if we go into here, um, oh, wait, we can't make the cheese yet. Ah, oh, we're not quite there. We need to get 1,500. But we've got the resources for it, at least. Let's have a look at the cork. Does it actually do anything other than just being cork? <laughs> um, it is plus 37 food in and of itself, which is pretty good. If you can compare that to, say, a roasted meat, it's 20 extra. So that's pretty good. Uh, and then, uh, hmm, do we want to... I think we want to... Like, let's let's do this. What are we going to do? We go to the food storage. We're going to put this in here. So let's find the cork and just put that over in the food storage. And another thing that Terracon Consulting said was about how we need to disable certain foods. And you're absolutely right. Now that we got to this stage of the game, if we go into our food section right here, we want to find certain things. So for example, cork, we don't want the meat in that. So we're going to put a cross next to that. We also need to look for the milk. So let's see if we can find that. This may actually be under water items and it is indeed. So bucket of milk, don't be drinking those. Bucket of salad milk, certainly do not drink those uh, for obvious reasons. So we want them drinking basically just water. They can have any wines and stuff if we have them. I'm not too worried about that for now. But yeah, so there we go. That should now all be good. The only other thing is the cheese. I'm going to disable it now while I remember. Once we start to make that, we may want to stockpile it. We may want to eat it ourselves. We may want to sell it. I don't know. But I don't want to give them the option to eat it just in case. And we also had a comment here uh, from Zero Squared and also from Mini about the fact that we can just build a wash tub in our town. And if we put that near the well, that seems like a really good idea. I was mentioning in the previous episode, it might have been two episodes ago now, uh, that basically we're struggling with like washing here. So this seems good. Um, now, just thinking about this, we could just place it down, right? We just put it in there and that's fine. Do we want a proper like washroom area? I wonder like maybe around the back here somewhere. Let me see what I can come up with here. The well is pretty secluded. So I think what I'm going to do, I am just going to place it down here for now uh, rather than making a proper washroom. But perhaps that's something we'll do later on. When we make like a neighborhood over in the city, we could have some more advanced things over there. Anyway, so what we need to do now is fill this. So I've got some buckets on me. Uh, in fact, let's go back into first person view real quick. Uh, and let's go ahead and craft up all these buckets of water so that I can make up eight. I think we only need three, but the rest I can just chuck into storage. They will be used uh, for obviously uh, drinks and things. So let's just get these crafted up. There we go. Okay, and then we'll quit out of here. And now we should be able to fill you up. So let's go ahead and do that. And this should fill the entire thing. So we've got plenty of it. And now we can take a bath. But we're not dirty, so I'll have to show you guys that later. But it's sort of ready now for when we do need it. And I'll just put the rest of the water over in here. I think it'd be really cool, actually, if your well worker actually went around filling up the basins. Uh, because I don't have a well worker at the moment just because we don't really need one. They don't really do much. But if they did that, I think that'd be a pretty cool thing, like a nice addition for them to do. And a nice thing to be able to automate in the town so we didn't have to go around filling up all the basins ourselves. Now, just to mention as well, we did have another super thanks, $10 from Nightbane. Nightbane, thank you very, very much for that. Thank you to everybody who is, of course, supporting, whether it's just watching or, of course, the super thanks and the memberships. Very appreciated. 
But uh, Nightbane was my most recent one, so big thank you to you. Now, something I want to try out here, just for uh, sort of scientific purposes, is I want to go ahead and injure myself a little bit. And uh, we're going to test something out here. I believe our wife can actually heal us and also give us special quests. Uh, so this is quite an interesting uh, thing. There's something I didn't know. Um, so Godly was the one who messaged there saying that uh, the wife can, can heal us. So we're going to test that out. And also the special quest thing about the wife being able to give a special quest. That was a comment I got from K Opton Camp. So thank you very much to you guys. Let's test this out. So I think the easiest way to hurt ourselves is just to jump off of a cliff somewhere. And let's just see what that does. Hopefully it doesn't actually kill me. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's kind of close. Took off about 60% about of my health right there. Okay, we are now hurt. Now let's go find our wife, uh, who's the red icon up on the top of the screen there. So it should be easy enough. And see if she'll heal us. So she should be in here. Uh, hello, Bogner. Um, okay, yep. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So she immediately said, you're hurt, grab this. And I said, I appreciate that. So she gave me a broadleaf plantain. That's interesting. Um, I thought she could also potentially feed us and give us water. So I guess in our inventory right now, she gave us this. Okay, so she doesn't actually fully heal us or anything. She just gives us a little bit of something. I mean, it's not terrible. Okay. And it looks like we can't repeat that. So she does help out a little bit, but not all that much. Uh, now, let me see. Uh, if I ask her, like, what's on her mind? She doesn't really say much there. Um, I don't think there's actually a quest here right now, right? I think maybe sometimes the quest comes, but it looks like right now there is no quest, right? Uh, favor to ask you, we've already done the taxes, so that's not a thing. Yeah, okay, I don't think there is a quest right now. Maybe it comes in the future. It's something I'll definitely keep my eye on. Um, oh my goodness, animals need feeding? Oh wait, that's okay. I was like, well, we have loads of animal feed, but that'll just be the geese or the chickens, I'm guessing, because uh, they're not, or they don't have a worker. Yeah, it's the geese. Okay, so we'll go and sort that out. Uh, and then we'll get on with something else. If we open up the management tab once again under the animals here, you'll see that the goat is now 100% ready to be milked and the sheep are on 99%. So I want to try this out right now. Uh, so first things first, we need to find our female goat, which I believe is you. So let's have a look here. Yes, you are. Uh, oh, there we go. Now we can hold down E and we can milk her. Okay, so that doesn't seem like they need to be outside of the fold, which is interesting because I did see a comment about that online. That doesn't seem to be the case. Now we only get one bucket of milk. Right, so this is actually quite slow because that one bucket of milk, there's only so much you can do with that, right? Um, which isn't a lot, basically. So now if we go back to management, you'll see that under the animals, the goat there is now on 0%. We'll keep an eye on how long it takes to get more, but uh, basically you're not going to be producing loads of this. Now both the sheep are at 99%, so I'll wait until they're at 100, shouldn't be too long. And then let's see how the shearing process goes and how much wool we actually get from them. Okay, the sheep are now saying they're at 100%, so let's have a look right here. If I look at these guys... All right, nothing seems to be happening. I mean, I'll just show you guys under management. We've got right here, there they are, both at 100%. In our inventory, we've got the scissors. Now, actually, someone said try unequipping the scissors. So let's do that a second. Unequip them. Now look back. Still doesn't seem to want to know, does it? So let's try the, the exact opposite to that. Let's actually go for that equipped and, and hold them. Now can I do anything? Doesn't look like it. Okay, this is really weird. Um, how about you? Nope, nothing. Oh, wait, there we go. It came up. All right, so I'm holding the scissors literally in my hand. If I hold down shear right now, it's it's working. Okay, that's interesting. So maybe it was just like a bit of a delay there. I didn't realize it was 100%. I'm not sure. There we go. We've got seven wool from that, and he's had a nice, or she's had a nice haircut, I should say, and uh, is all skinny again. So now, are you able to be sheared? You are. Okay, so once it's saying 100%, Maybe it's still a bit of lag time. It takes a little bit longer. So we've got seven from the girl and we've got, let's have a look here, eight from the guy. I'm not sure if that's just a chance thing or if it's going to be the same every time. But there we go. We finally figured out the shearing and that's pretty cool. Now inside the uh, sewing hut, if we go to the spinning wheel, you see here we have this, which we can unlock and we will. So it's going to cost us 750 coins. And we can craft up this wool thread. So that's pretty good. Um, I think it's like six wool per thread. We can only craft two up here, as you can see. So yeah, it's like a little bit uh, expensive, I guess, you know, compared to the amount of wool that you get. But that can be used for a number of things. So over here at the loom, we've bought this, uh, the wool fabric, and then we can craft up this. So we use the thread to craft up wool fabric. And of course, the wool fabric then can be used for making things like clothes. So for example, we could now make a tunic. And this costs 700 to unlock, but I am going to do it. And I'm going to go get some leather. And let's see how much they sell for and what the stats of that are. Okay, so right now we can make up the tunic, which is, let's see, uh, no, it's not in there. It's under tunics. And let's make that one up. So yes, this costs us 700. I doubt very, very much that we're going to get 700 for selling it. But of course, once the recipe is unlocked, we can make as many as we need to. Uh, so the, the wool production is a bit slow, though. That's the only thing. We'll have to see how we go with that. 
But let's have a look here. So the tunic is down here. Um, 510 is the, the value of it. So we'll probably need to sell about three of these before we start to make a profit. Uh, but it does have some, some big things here, right? Plus 14% for cold protection, which is really good. Um, and uh, it's not good for, for heat protection. This is a winter item, but that's pretty good. If we compare it to the linen shirt we're wearing right now, for example, that gives us only plus 6% cold protection, although it does also protect against the heat too. So it does have its uses there. Uh, but that's, that's where we're at, right? And then we've got three wool left right here. So we're going to go put all this away in our storage. And uh, it's, it's good to be on this road. Potentially in the future, we can look at investing in like getting more sheep and stuff like that. Maybe having a full sheep pen that's got a worker in there and things. It's just they're expensive to buy, so we'll have to see. But the long term, we could potentially make a lot of money out of this. So pretty good for obviously like paying our taxes and expanding our village. One thing I'd really like to do as soon as I can is build a mine. I think it would look really cool over there where the mine is, of course. And also, obviously, it will produce a lot for us. Now, if I go on to the uh, building technology here, you can see that 5,000 is required for a mine. And we're at almost 4,000, so just over 1,000 to go, which isn't too bad. Like, it's still a lot to do, but it's not, like, terrible. And we can develop this technology by extracting uh, activities, as it says here, and building. Now, I don't really have much to build at the moment, uh, so I think extracting is going to be the way to go. And I'm going to test this out. So what we're going to do is go into the storage right here. I believe I should have some bronze pickaxes that are at 100%, and I do. So I'm just going to take out one of those. And I'm going to go right the way through it and basically until it's broken. And let's see what it goes up to. So let's have a look right here. Right now we are on 3,957.4. I'm going to go now into my mine, use it all up. We'll see what resources we get. And actually we need the horse for this for the extra storage. So uh, we'll check the resources. We'll check how much it actually goes up by. And it'll give us an idea then of how far we actually are off of uh, unlocking that mine. Because uh, it would be really nice to build. For those of you who have watched previous episodes, you'll see that we've been making a bit of an area around here. We've got the smithy and we've got the extraction hut here. So to have the mine in here just to finish this area off would make it look really, really cool. Anyway, now that I'm in the mine, I'm going to get on with what I'm doing. And I'll let you guys know the results when we're done. I managed to empty that entire cave, even getting all of the uh, salt deposits too. And just as I said that, I thought I missed one. <laughs> but no, I think that's all done. Uh, and our pickaxe, as you can see here, has got 2.2% left. So that's pretty good. Uh, we're going to see, I'm not going to like go to another cave just for that 2%. Let's see on technology right now. So we went up to 4,017 from 3,957.4. So we got roughly like 50 points or so from emptying an entire cave. Obviously, we do get the resources from it too, but this would be a pretty slow way of trying to level up. I say that because we'd need to go through about 20 caves in order to get the 1,000 points in total, and there are not that many on the map. So we'd have to do this like over a few seasons. And we basically only be doing mining. So we're going to need to look at other ways, like other things that we can do. But at least you guys do now have that information. The other thing I wanted to do, obviously I got dirty from doing that, is try out our brand new wash basin, right? Which we got uh, around here. So let's go ahead and take a bath in there. So it takes a little bit of time to do. It's probably a little bit slower there than if you just do this in uh, by jumping into a river. Uh, but there we go. Does it use... Oh, wait, it doesn't use any durability at all. So we can just take as many baths as we want and this stays at 100%. Wow. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then my other comment earlier about having someone going around filling these up is obviously uh, redundant, right? We don't need them to if this just works. That's actually fantastic. Okay. Well, I did not know that. That's really nice that you just fill them up once and then they work. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, about a day has passed. If we go into management here, I'm just wondering on the animal front, uh, if we check on our sheep, so about 25% a day maybe then, because like, it's not been a full day yet. Yeah, it looks like maybe that's what's going to happen, right? So every four days, they're going to be ready which is obviously every season and another day uh, if you're playing on the three-day season like I am. So yeah, kind of slow progress, I guess. Um, but the, you know, it is what it is. We'll make the best of it. My plan right now is to get a load of money together. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to craft up a load of bronze and then make a load of bronze weapons and then just sell them in the morning. I'm thinking if we can get a load of money together, we might actually be able to buy a few more sheep and just improve the uh, production of wool. And if we do that... We can obviously turn that into other things, which would be kind of useful. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I'm thinking is a good way to go. You can see here I've got a ton of uh, copper on me. I've got a ton of tin on me, and that's going to turn into a ton of bronze. Uh, now, oh, yeah, okay, so I made the tin bars. I've got to make up the uh, the bronze bars now, and uh, let's see, we can make 29 of those, but I've actually got some, some more over in my resource storage too. So, yeah, this is, this is my thinking. And we may even get into a sheep pen today, but certainly at the very least, we're going to make a ton of money. So I'm going to do obviously most of this work off camera, and then uh, we'll see how much money we actually make and go from there. What I've done is uh, basically made up a load of tools that we might need here. So I made a couple of pickaxes there out of bronze, 
Uh, made see a couple of shovels. I've got some of my own ones on me. It's durability is different. A couple of sickles there as well. Uh, and I think uh, we made a couple of axes. There we go as well. So basically, I wanted to make sure that my citizens were going to be all right for all the tools that they're going to need. And now that's done, we can see how much else we can make to turn it into money. Because obviously, if we end up like making everything uh, into tools that we just then sell all those tools, and then all of a sudden our citizens need them, it's kind of a bit of a waste of time and money to do it that way. But as you're about to see, we do have an absolute ton of bronze left on us. So we got 34 bars in here, plus eight on us. Let's grab out like half of those and half the logs, because I don't know how much else we'll be able to carry. We're already almost overburdened and see what we're going to make here. So I typically go for axes when it comes to the, the bronze stuff that we make up. Uh, I think they sell for a reasonable amount like versus the materials. So we're going to do that. So we can make 12 axes already here and we've got more to make up. So this is going to be quite a haul in terms of money and uh, that will hopefully be a lot of sheep at the end of the day. So all up, we've got 12 axes there. We've got eight there. That is 20 times by 630. Obviously, we get about half that. So it's called like, you know, 10 times, uh, 20 times 300, I should say. Um, so about 6,000, right, um, is hopefully what we're going to get. Now, I'm on 6,200 right now. I'm going to go around and sell them. I'll probably have to go to more than one place. And I've done that a few times on camera. I don't think it's the most interesting thing. So I'll probably just go and do it all off camera. And then once it's all done, we'll see how much money we've actually got. And then look at the price of sheep and go from there. I accidentally kept my fan running during this clip. And when I played it back, it sounded really, really horrible. I realized a little way into it. So what I'm going to do is cut to that point. What you're seeing on screen right now, though, is what I was doing. I went to Astoria. Um, in terms of money, we actually made more than I thought we would. I think um, I ended up on like 15,000. You can see it there on the screen, whatever that is. Um, so it was a lot, a lot more than I thought. And then we started to buy some sheep, and that's what I was doing. And that's when I like realized that uh, my fan had been on the whole time and uh, started to bring you guys back in. I was talking about how we're going to have a lot more females than males, and that's fine because of the breeding process. So apologies for that clip, but I thought it was better to just do a voiceover for this because the fan did sound really bad. Let's uh, return to the episode. Apologies, guys. I realized my fan was on there for a while um, while I was recording. Hopefully it didn't sound too bad. It is actually so hot here in Australia at the moment. Uh, so I do need it on in between recordings. Uh, it's uh, crazy hot in this room. My computer puts out a ton of heat. Anyway, yeah, I was just saying, if we've got the one male and a load of females, I think the chance of them breeding does go up. So you see here, we're now getting like a ton of sheep in here. We've still got 9,000 left. Let's see, you're also a sheep, uh, as it were, like a female sheep, I should say. So we'll put you in there. Then we've got this dude here, the ram. I'm not going to worry too much about him. Although we can still shear him. Uh, let's just do it. You know, why not? Let's do it. And the breeding might go up and stuff anyway. We've got the two guys and a load of girls. The guys can still be bred, as I say. Now, I think actually there is another area here. So like, that's just like one area for sheep in a store. We just have a little run around, I think. So there's the goats. Weren't there sheep just over here before? Or had they just, uh, maybe they'd escaped their pen before and were roaming around here. Yeah, that must be what happened because I'm not seeing any here right now. Uh, but we've done really well there. I'm pretty happy with that. And even after all of that, we've still got over 7,000 coins left. So it's going to be a, a lot of sheep production in the future and still a lot of money for taxes and other things like that. Incidentally, I just checked and all of the sheep we've bought are actually at 100% readiness uh, for being sheared. So it's actually pretty good because immediately you're going to get a return on those sheep, um, albeit obviously uh, you know, relative to the fact that you've just spent all that money. But not bad. So let's see, are you one of them? No, you, you're looking a bit skinny. Oh, that makes sense. They're all in here, hanging out, waiting to be sheared. Maybe it's just they're too hot to go outside. Um, What is he? Okay, there we go. And that's how shearing looks when you're in third person, guys. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and shear all these sheep right now. And uh, let's see. Let's see how much uh, wool we get from shearing all of them. I think it's about eight of them. We'll double check that at the end. So with all those sheep sheared, let's see right down here. We've got 51 wool from that. Um, now, obviously, the wool itself not worth too much. But it can, of course, be sold. And one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go put this in the resource storage for now, and perhaps we'll come out to using more wool later for things. I want to see if there's any already in here from our worker. So it should be probably down the bottom. We've got three in here, but I think that was from me before. Um, so, oh, you know what? Is it because they don't have any shears, right? So let's actually go now. Let's check these shears in here. Now we can check actually under management if we go to the uh, animal husbandry building of, let's see. The fold, there we go. Uh, so under here, we can now start doing this if we want. So right now we get like almost no milk per day. That's the only thing. It's it's really, really quite low. Let's put that down to like, if we did 50-50, let's see how that works out. I really wish there was a bar here where we could either type in the number or uh, drag and drop because it's quite slow. Anybody else feel that way or is that just me? Well, if we do 50-50, you can see here we get 10 wool per day. I'm almost at the point where I'm wondering why we bother with the goats at all. Um, we can get milk from uh, cows later on, for example. So, yeah, we could do that as a way of getting milk. 
the wool is just really good. And I feel like what I'm going to do for now is just put this down to zero, put the wool up to 100, and get it'll be 21 wool per day that we're getting. And that wool can be used for crafting into all kinds of things that are going to bring us money and also like nice clothing for during the winter and stuff like that. So to me, this is a better way to go. Now, correct me if I'm wrong if you're watching this and I've, I've missed like a glaring error there. Uh, do let me know. I'm sure you guys will. But I think that's the best way to go. I will keep the goats for now. I'm not going to sell them or anything like that. We'll just keep hold of them and, and let them do their thing, I guess. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It just seems like a better way to go. One thing I've wanted to do for a, a little while now is to make up a bit of a dining area somewhere here for this little uh, community that we've built up. So that's what we're going to have a look at doing today. Build like a little outdoor dining area. In fact, we might build a couple. I was thinking like one on this side of the fireplace and one down there. So we'll start with this one down here and then we can do them a bit differently as well. So let's see here. If we go into furniture and decorations, the first thing we're going to need, of course, is tables. Now I am going to unlock this wooden table, right? It's 1500 to buy. It is a lot, but we're going to do it. It looks really cool um, and it looks, it looks nice. I'm just wondering though, um, whether if we go to the tables, would something like this simple one or the log one even, let's buy the log one as well, would that look better outside? That doesn't look like a dining table to me. That looks more like a workbench. We're not going to use that one. Let's see here under, not benches, sorry, under this table here. This one looks quite nice. We'll probably use both, I would think. But let's just use this one for now because this one's got more wooden buildings down this end with that one there. So let's place this, I guess, just here. I'm trying to think about, like, the right orientation for it. I think that looks okay. Now, we're going to decorate this. Obviously, it's not just going to be like that. So let's see how we go with decoration. So I think what we want to do now is under seats. Let's go down to chairs here. We've got all these different chairs. We can't build this one just yet. We don't have the, the uh, technology for it. But everything else, I think, is fine. Um, we just need to buy this for a thousand. So it's expensive buying stuff. That's the only thing, but we'll be okay. So let's go for a simple wooden chair here. And uh, let's see, we want to rotate you around. So we can probably get six people on each of these tables, right? So we can put one here. Wait, how close can we get this? Is that... Okay, it doesn't seem to tuck under very well. It can come back to here, though. We can place one there like that. Okay. Uh, and then maybe I'll do a second one of these around the other side. So like around here. Let's go ahead and place that down there. And get you like as close as we can. So like, excuse me, that. Okay. So yeah, unfortunately, they don't get any closer to the table than that. That's, that's not ideal. Um, I wonder if we go to some of the other chairs, whether there's any difference there. Like if we use one of these, for example, does that get any closer? Like I was thinking these would look good on the end, right? So we could have one of these on each end. But it doesn't look like they get very close to that table, unfortunately. Oh, well, we'll still place one on each end. I think it's going to be nice uh, to have these proper little seats and things. And then basically you can have six people sat at each table, uh, potentially. I just uh, it would have been good if they made them a bit closer. So what I want to do now is if we go back to the seats here. We used uh, this one, didn't we? The simple wooden chair. Let's use the log chair right now. So we've got something a bit different. And we'll place one of those down here. So again, we'll get it as close as we can, which will be about there. And then I think we want something different on this final one over here just so it's not all the same, right? So it's not like all symmetrical. So let's see what our options are in terms of seats. Probably going to have to be one of these things. So maybe we should use this one here, place this one down like this. And yeah, there we go. So yeah, this is it. Like a little dining area right here. As I say, it is unfortunate that we can't place them right next to it, but that's fine. What we can do though is decorate this. Um, oh, wow. Okay, let's have a look here. So we've got a range of different tablecloths available to us that just require some linen fabric. Uh, I actually think this one looks really nice, the table runner. That's pretty good. We'll do a different one for each of them. And I like the sideways one as well. So I'll get some linen fabric. Let's go decorate the table. In the meantime, just before I get to that stage, actually what I'm going to do is build the other table down here. So let's see, that was, must have been the simple wooden table, right? Is this one different? Yeah, I think this one looks different. So this is the most expensive table we can get in the game. All right, so we're going to place this one down over on this side like this and have a little dining area. Let's put it a bit more sideways just like that. So we've got the two tables, right? That's how one of them looks, just like that. And then down here, you've got the other one that looks like this. Uh, they're both nice enough, I, I suppose. Um, so my only gripe really is that the chairs don't get close enough, but other than that, it's pretty good. Okay, so over on this side, I bought this bench. It would cost me another 1500 So uh, yeah, decoration is definitely expensive in this game. Also put down some different chairs here, including them facing a little bit in a different direction. Um, <laughs> I know I've said this, but it really baffles me as to why you would put this like this, where the chairs cannot get closer. Uh, we did go for a different uh, tablecloth as well, so that's pretty cool. We got the tablecloth there, and I did add the tablecloth down on this one, which was the like full-length table runner, so that's good. Now, I think there's a way that we can do some extra decorational stuff here, and I just want to check this out. So if we go over to the workshop, I want to try something over on here. Let's free up this workbench. Uh, there we go. And let's craft some things up. So for example, wooden plates, right? Let's unlock the scheme right there and let's make those up. We can make up five wooden plates. 
And uh, I mean, it says on them that they uh, can be used for various cooking of dishes in the uh, in the kitchen. So I don't know if they are just you know decorational stuff, but there are other things here that that will be. So let's uh, just oh, well, let's try it out basically. And I think the only way we'd be able to do it is if I grab one of these wooden plates, throw it onto the floor. So uh, let's see, a wooden plate down there, just one. Okay, then we're gonna grab you. Okay, and now we have like a UFO coming through the town. Can I drop this onto the table? Oh, awesome, I can. Okay, cool. So we're going to do that. We're going to put some plates down. I'm going to make up some cups and some spoons over at the workshop as well, and we'll do all of that. I think I'll just show you guys the finished product because I don't think it's necessarily going to be all that fun to watch, but uh, that's how you do that if you want to do this in your world. And you actually, in, in that case, you could get them like wherever you wanted and have them pretty like central and stuff. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm going to like put them around a bit sporadically, but... Uh, Go nuts with this and enjoy yourselves when you're decorating. Here's how the table looks when it's all decorated, and I have to say that is definitely a lot nicer. So we've got like the tablecloth and the bowls and spoons and you know plates and cups and all that sort of stuff. Uh, things you'd expect to find on tables. <laughs> and uh, basically, I have seen the guys using it as well. This is how the other one looks instantly. So did decorate them a bit differently, put a few different things on each one just to keep it looking uh, a bit different and whatever. I think it's pretty nice. So I think this area now has uh, come on a little bit. It's something I've wanted to have for a while. They've now got the communal outdoor uh, dining areas, which can have up to 12 people. So yeah, pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Hopefully you guys agree. Incidentally as well, we did have uh, some more piglets being born or uh, one more, I think. So we've now got three piglets. On top of that, we also had a donkey being born. So we've got the, the baby donkey right now. And as for our baby horse, that is 1.25 years old. I think maybe two is when they become an adult, but I'm not certain on that. It might be three. Uh, either way, you know, things are progressing there. So just uh, keeping you up to date on that because I haven't mentioned that one. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. If you did and you are not yet subscribed, then please do consider subscribing to support the channel. But for now, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode.